Hi guys, today I'm working on the Maximum Perimeter Triangle Challenge. It's a hacker rank challenge under the greedy algorithm sections. So it's going to be kind of straightforward. I've already coded it, so I'm just going to be um, pasting my code and explaining as I, as I go along. But the instructions is what you can see on my left right here, what I'm highlighting. So it says, give it an array of stick lengths. Use three of them to construct a non-degenerate triangle with maximum possible perimeter. So we're going to receive um, what you see here because we need to complete that function here. Currently it's empty. The function is called maximum perimeter triangle and it takes a vector of integers called sticks. So that is going to be uh, what they refer to here, an array of stick lengths. So um, imagine we have something like this, sticks equals, that is the array, one, two, three, four, five, and 10. And then now we need to find uh, which ones of these sticks can form a non-degenerate triangle. So the problem here is reduced to two, three, and four. These can form a triangle. And then three, four, and five can also form a triangle. But between these two right here, the longest perimeter is uh, the second one, three, four, and five, because that equals 12. So now how are we going to code this? I'm going to... Um, copy these, this first block of code, and then I'm going to paste it here, and then now I'm going to explain. So at first what I'm doing here is I'm sorting the integer that I received as parameter, right? Because the parameter is the vector of int called sticks. We don't know if it's sorted or not. So we sort it first so that we can get the values in ascending order. Now that we've sorted our array or our vector instead, um, I can create a new 2D vector that I'm calling valid triangles. In this case, I'm referring to non-degenerate triangles. And the reason why it's a vector of vector of integers is because each of these vector of integers are going to be triangles. Each of these triangles are going to store three integers corresponding to their three different sides or their three different lengths. So then I'm going to have a collection of these triangles in a vector so that I can look through them and pick the optimal one, the one with the longest parameter. So now I, I grab the size of this um, vector that is as a parameter. So the sticks, how many uh, sticks do we have? I grab the size here so that I don't have to call that method over and over again in my for loop because I don't want to read it backwards. So then I say i equals zero, that's an integer. And then we're going to loop through all the way until the third to last value. So uh, now I create a single triangle. It has three slots, three sides, and I'm going to initialize all these integers to zero. And now I also have this invalid uh, Boolean variable. And it's a Boolean variable because that can only return true or false. Now, if you're wondering how I'm coming up with that formula, to find out if it's a non-degenerate triangle or not, I recommend you go on this uh, page. You can always Google that title. It's from Stack Overflow. But basically, this is how you can find out if a triangle is a degenerate triangle. So if A plus B is greater than C and so on, or you can also shorten these, um, these rules like this. A plus B is less than or equal to C. So this is what will, will tell you if the triangle is degenerate or not. But we want the opposites. That's why here I have invalid because if it's degenerate, then it's invalid. And now I say if it's not invalid, in that case, it's a valid triangle. It's a unique triangle that we can use. It meets our constraints. Then I'm going to store these uh, sticky values inside of my triangle vector. So the first side or the first length is going to be equal to sticks i here i'm assigning the value for the second length of my triangle and here is for the third length of my triangle and then once i'm done populating the uh the length values for my triangle i push it to my triangles collection and that is the 2d vector that i was talking about right here all right so now that we are done with that part of the code I'm going to collect the rest of it. Actually, I'm going to collect the whole thing right here and keep explaining what I'm doing. So I've already explained the top right here. So now I'm going to proceed to that part. 
Once we are done with our first for loop, our valid triangles 2D vector should be populated with triangle vectors. If it is empty, however, that means we were not able to find any non-degenerate triangle. And in that case, we can simply return a triangle with a single side, which is not a triangle actually, but that's what this uh, challenge requires us to do. It wants us to return negative one. So what we will do is return a triangle with a single side uh, and it has a value minus one or negative one rather. And then uh, we're going to push that to our triangles collection. And if you want to understand why I am uh, creating a vector and pushing it, well, first of all, uh, this function requires the uh, return data type to be a vector of integers. And uh, secondly, you can also look at how they write their own code here to understand why I'm doing that. But I'm going to proceed with my explanation here. So in case we were able to find non-degenerate triangles, like we found some uh, triangles that meet our constraints, then we are going to run this else block right here. So what I'm doing here at first is I am assuming that the first triangle inside uh, my 2D vector, inside my collection of triangles, has the longest maximum sides. Okay, because that's one of the conditions. So it says if there are several valid triangles, in this case, if we have multiple values inside of our valid triangles 2D vector, then we need to choose the one with the longest maximum side. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm assuming that the first triangle at first has the longest maximum side. So this is our 2D vector. Index zero means our first triangle inside of our 2D vector. And uh, this index two corresponds to the last length, or, or you can say the last tick or the last int value. And the reason why it's index two is because remember here at the very top, we've already sorted the values. So it's in ascending order. So definitely when I'm storing or I'm populating the uh, the length values of my triangle, the last one is going to be the uh, the maximum one, the longest one. Now I want to get the size of my valid triangles to the vector. How many triangles do we have to, to process to find the optimal one? So I'm creating an iterator and it's a vector of int, it's a 2D vector here and it has an iterator that I'm calling ITR. And it starts at the beginning of the vector plus one. The reason why I have plus one here, the reason why I have plus one here is because I've already made that assumption at the top that the first one at index zero has the longest maximum size. So as I'm looping through the, uh, the triangles that I've um, considered as valid, I want to start at index one. So from the second one, going. So now that I have that, I can loop through until the very end. That's what you see here. ITR is not equal to valid triangles dot end. And then I can increase or increment ITR by one at every iteration. Now, remember here, we already have a max side value here and we're assuming that it's the first one. So we want to check if every triangle that we loop through has a longer side. So that's what this condition does here and I am accessing every single triangle by dereferencing my iterator. So if indeed um, it, it is lower, so if it's lower than our current max size, then we want to remove it from our collection of triangles because definitely it's not an optimal solution. It may be a feasible solution, but not an optimal solution. So otherwise, if it is longer than the max size that we currently have, then that means we can pick that triangle as the optimal solution and instead delete or erase our previous one. Once this is done, we will simply return the first item from our valid triangles to the vector. So let's run this code here. I think um, I've explained it clearly, but if I have not, then please make sure you leave your comments. All right, so let's submit that now, just to make sure that we pass all the various test cases. There are 12 test cases, I believe, and we've passed all of them. If you guys want to better understand what I did, I created another version of my codes, and that code contains some C out statements to help you debug the, uh, the program. So let me run this and you will see the, you will understand what I'm talking about. So you can see here, for instance, 
if we pass this 11133, these are the valley triangles. So this is pretty much what they've explained here. There are two possible unique triangles, which is 111133. These are valleys. But after filtering by maximum sides, which is what we did right here, then the only triangle that will be left is this one. Same thing with sample test case one and so on. So um, I've added these C out statements just to help you guys understand what it is that I'm doing. I might not post that on GitHub, but you guys can probably pause and uh, and copy what I have. So that's it for this greedy algorithm challenge called maximum perimeter triangle. Um, if you like this video, please make sure you subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, uh, drop your comment in the comment section and make sure you turn on your notifications and I will catch you next time. Bye.